Hi, welcome to Knives and Frocks. I'm Virginia. I hope you've enjoyed watching my Asian salmon and char siu recipes from my earlier videos. If you haven't caught them yet, head to YouTube and check them out at Wear Media. Now I'm sure you figured out that I love Asian flavors. So today we're gonna make a Penang Thai curry. Now this came about because I heard on the grapevine that my favorite Thai restaurant in London, the Old Pack Horse, has taken the Penang Gung Yai off their menu and it has been my mission to figure out the recipe. Now theirs has shrimp in it, but I'm going to make a much requested vegetarian version today with butternut squash and it is to die for. So let's get to it. Now don't be put off, there is a lot of ingredients here, but if you're cooking Asian food at home, hopefully this is all stuff that you're gonna start to have in your pantry. So here's what you're gonna need. Two cans of coconut milk. I'm using one light and one regular, but that's just preference. One butternut squash, cubed. It makes up about four cups. Now this isn't in the recipe, but I'm adding mushroom this time just to make it a bit meatier. And that's the great thing about this recipe. You can add or take away whatever you like. One onion, sliced. Half a lime, juiced. Now I'm using fish sauce in this recipe, which does contain anchovy. So if you're a strict vegetarian or vegan, you can use an alternative. There's some great vegan fish sauces out there. You can use soy sauce or liquid aminose. Just find something that's quite salty and tangy. If you are gonna use a vegan version, I would add a bit more lime juice than normal. One tablespoon of sugar. Now in Thailand, they would use palm sugar, but I just don't have access to that in Nashville. So normal sugar is just fine. One teaspoon of Penang curry paste. If you can't find Penang, red Thai curry paste will work just as well. If you can get your hands on kefir lime leaves, great. If not, just zest a lime and that's a great alternative. One tablespoon of creamy peanut butter, two cloves of garlic and one inch of ginger, sliced and then finely chopped. I use this fancy little gadget where I put them both in together and it does it for you. Add a chili or two if you like it spicy or you can just leave them out. In a large frying pan, put in your butternut squash, the onion and any other veggies you want to add. Brown them a little bit and then add your curry paste, the peanut butter and your ginger and garlic. At the same time, we're gonna crack the coconut milk. So in a separate hot wok, pour one can of the coconut milk. Now cracking it means to take the water out and just leave a thick coconutty base, which is really strong flavored. Now once it comes to the boil, let it boil three or four minutes and just stir around the edges. It'll start to reduce and look separated and grainy and that's exactly what you want. Once your coconut milk is cracked, you can add your butternut squash vegetable mixture into the coconut milk. Now the curry paste has really permeated all those vegetables. Stir everything in and then add the other can of coconut milk. Now add a little bit of salt, your fish sauce, your sugar and your lime. Bring everything back to the boil and if you were going to add another protein like tofu or shrimp or some leafy greens like kale, I would do it now. Stir everything in, let it simmer and then it's ready. You can garnish it with things like fresh coriander, some spring onions sliced, Half Baked Harvest taught me that pomegranate arils are a really beautiful garnish and she serves hers with noodles instead of rice. So I'm gonna try that today. I hope you try this and love it. I encourage you to add and take away whatever you like. Please follow me on Instagram at Knives and Frocks and subscribe to our channel at Wear Media.